What's up, everybody? It's the Alex Leak and Friends NFL Podcast, back for another week. I am your host, Alex Leak, and we have a special guest with us on the podcast. Uh, former Alabama Crimson Tide, Green Bay Packer, and Dallas Cowboy, nine-year NFL free safety, George Teague. Thanks so much for coming on the show, George. Yes, sir. I appreciate it, man. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's cool. Um... So let's start at the beginning for you. Uh, in high school, you attended Jefferson Davis High in Montgomery, Alabama. Is that correct? Yeah, I did. It was kind of a, I'd say a long road for me to get there because my dad was in the military, so we moved all around and landed in Alabama uh, my, uh, my freshman year. So ended up going to high school there, going to Jeff Davis High School. Okay. Um, as a senior cornerback, you were named first team All State and academic All State. What were those high school days like in Montgomery, Alabama? Man, it was uh, it's pretty good. A little, a little challenging, as I said, just being all over the place, moving all over the country. It's kind of the world, I guess, being in the military, getting to to Alabama, getting new friends, trying to start an athletic career. Um, you know, it was difficult um, from, you know, one aspect, but, you know, being an athlete pretty much all of my life, it was, it was fine from the football standpoint. Uh, it took a little bit of getting used to, and I was kind of small at that time. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I'm under, I went into high school about 155 pounds. Wow. Um, yeah. Um, left the close to 180. Uh, the time playing running back at 155 pounds wasn't working, so I moved the defensive back. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm. that's cool you picked the defensive side of the ball. Um, what led to you? Was football always your favorite sport or the sport that you wanted to play, or were you a multiple sport athlete uh, in high school days? Yeah, I think most people don't realize that I was a, soccer was actually my first sport growing up. Oh, okay. Um, and then, I had to make a decision once I got in high school. Couldn't do both. Couldn't do football and soccer. So, it was football and uh, the rest is history. Did you even think about trying to play two sports? Uh, I know that's kind of like the craze nowadays. These guys trying to play multiple sports at the professional level. No, no. The only thing I wanted to do was um, play football and run track once I got in high school. Nice. That's it. Um, and then what was your recruitment like coming out of high school? What led to you uh, choosing to be at Alabama Crimson Tide? Mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of interest, of course, a lot from the SEC, uh, and even from the ACC. Uh, took some trips, you know, I was, it, was pretty, it came down to the top two were Georgia Tech and Alabama at the time. Uh, but Bill Curry is the coach that actually recruited me into Alabama. And I just loved everything about it when I took my official visit, the way they treated me and recruited me. So, uh, signed in to, to go be a Crimson Tider. Nice. That's sweet. Uh, it definitely worked out for you. Um, at first, it was a little bit of a slow start. As a freshman, you were re uh, the reserve cornerback at Alabama. As a sophomore, you were named the starting corner and re recorded an interception. Um, your junior year, though, you were moved from starting corner to starting free safety. At the time, how did you feel about the position move? Um, it didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, making the move just because I, I knew what kind of hitter I was. And it also still... The way we played it at that time, I still was getting a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, certain packages, moving the corner or nickel. So it was almost like I was doing both roles. Okay. Um, so it didn't, it didn't bother me at all. Just We had some really good guys, <laughs> a good DBs, and for me to stay on the field, I was all in. Nice. That's what's up, and it really affected your career. Your junior year, your move to free safety, and you took off. Uh, you would lead the SEC in interceptions with six and also record career highs in tackles with 54 and passes defense with 11. A uh, hell of a junior year. Um, 
So, what was that junior year like really taking off? Well, it really um, changed my aspect or my thought path on if I wanted to do something post college, really try to make it to the NFL or not. Yeah. That was, about, that was a critical year for me because it, it really wasn't on the radar for me until, you know, after that season when I started getting a little bit of uh, notoriety or, or people recognizing. Yeah. Yeah, and you you uh, took advantage of that opportunity your senior year as well. Uh, you would tie for the SEC lead in interceptions with six. Your college career, fourteen interceptions were too short of the school record at that time. And then your national buzz really picked up in the 1993 Sugar Bowl versus the heavily favored Miami Hurricanes. Um, you would return your first college interception for a touchdown in the game. And then five plays later, your iconic chase down tackle on Miami wide receiver Lamar Thomas and strip the ball from preventing a touchdown. Now, I know that play was waved off because of offsides, but I mean, if he scored a touchdown there, they go up. Hell of a play. How did you make that play? I, I watched the highlight and you were so far behind him and you came flying up and just stole that ball. Well, fear makes you do a whole, makes you a whole lot faster. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, and a uh, huge play that helped keep Miami from scoring an offensive touchdown in the game. Uh, you go on, you know, that win uh, gave you guys the 1992 National Championship. Uh, it was the, you were part of the eighth Alabama football perfect season, going 13-0, and and you were part of the number one defense in the country uh, there in Alabama in 1992, so it had to be a hell of a year for you. Yeah, it had to be an incredible time. Um, and then uh, after that great success in Alabama, what was your mindset uh, coming out and heading into the 1993 NFL Drafts? Did you have high expectations going in? Yeah, like you mentioned, you'd be selected in the first round, pick 29 overall by the Green Bay Packers. Did you know the storied tradition of Green Bay football at the time, and were you excited to join the franchise? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I think the tradition of it uh, being very cold, very <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. It's a great opportunity, and as a rookie Packer free safety, you would start 12 games and um, save your best, really, for the playoffs. Uh, you had um, the longest interception in NFL playoff history of 101 yards for a touchdown at the Detroit Lions, helping the Packers win 28-24 in the playoffs. Um, you seem to shine brightest in the biggest games. Is that a fair statement? Yes, sir. Um, I appreciate that. You know, to that humbly. You know, it's just something we talked about that I always talk about with my family, my kids, and general. But, you know, when the lights are on, when we're in those big moments, we it's our desire to, to shine the biggest. And when people are watching or you're competing, um, something like being in that big stage, you know, it's easy to go think, do things out the park or. Um, at the bowling alley or the, <laughs> the yeah. arcade or whatever it is, but when you're out in front of a lot of people, man, it, it's everybody doesn't get those opportunities, and we need to take advantage of those opportunities uh, whenever we get them. Yeah, absolutely, and you did a great job of doing that. Um, in 1994, you would un overcome a thyroid condition that caused you to lose weight early in training camp but you ended up bouncing back and starting all 16 games for Green Bay and uh, in your second season and were, re would record three interceptions and 53 tackles. Uh, what was that year like? Yeah, that was uh, tough to, to come back from the, the thyroid, um, the overactive thyroid that I had because uh, I lost a, a ton of weight within the you know, starts free safety in the, in the league and, you know, being 170 pounds, 165 pounds, that wasn't going to work. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to pack on 30 pounds or more in an off season and still be able to run and I have the aches. It was, it made for a, a challenging year, um, but, um, thankfully I was able to recover over the course of the off season. Yeah, absolutely. Great job overcoming the adversity and bouncing back good as ever. Um, and then in 1995, you would start 15 games, missing one game due to a broken toe, and record 72 tackles and two picks on the season. Uh, the only bad news really is for the third straight year, the Packers would be eliminated in the playoffs by the Dallas Cowboys, this time in the NFC Championship game. What was it about the Dallas Cowboys during that span that made them so difficult? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mark Rowan, Emmett, and uh, Troy. Um, so, like, we could never overcome that piece. But even when we thought we had a chance in the last one, because Troy ended up not playing, but then Jason Garrett came in and torched us <laughs> for 44 points or whatever. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> they, they were our nemesis. We couldn't get past them not those three years while I was there. Well, um,. Then at the end of the 95 season, you were traded to the Atlanta Falcons, who would then release you. Six days later, you would be signed as a free agent by the Dallas Cowboys, who had to, uh, I mean, they were beating up Green Bay, but they had to see some good stuff in you, bringing you into the franchise. Um, what was the experience like there of kind of bouncing around from a couple teams and uh, not knowing where you would end up and then signing with the great Cowboys? Most people don't really get it here or understand this side of the game. You know, that was a, a very tough time uh, for me in the football world because you said I was traded, then released, spent time with another team. I mean, in, you know, the course of a couple months, I was in three different cities. Yeah. Yeah, and like you said, people tend to take that for granted that these are p 
people and they have lives and families and you get traded, you know, just out of the blue and you have to switch cities, it's got to be stressful and difficult. So nice to see you overcome that. Um, in 1996 with the Cowboys, he would start the season as the nickel cornerback, only to step in uh, for injured safety Brock Marion and start eight games as his replacement. You had finished the regular season with 70 tackles and a career-high four interceptions. And then uh, your signature career game in the 1996 wildcard playoff game versus the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, you were dominant and helped the Dallas win 40-15. to and you forced, you yourself forced three turnovers on three straight possessions. Forced fumble, um, saved a touchdown, forced another fumble on the next possession, and then a 29-yard interception return for a touchdown. I looked at that uh, Vikings, when you forced a fumble, I believe it was on like the two-yard line. That was incredible. That was a hell of a play by you to save a touchdown there. Man, I appreciate it. That was the uh, Alabama game, you know, just not giving up, staying with it, and you know, trying to get the ball out of their hands at any point in time. I, I remember that, you know, playing and you know, seeing Anthony get ready to run across the, the goal line for a touchdown. He just happened to switch it and move his hands at the right time for me, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I was able to knock it out. So, you know, it, it goes back to what you said before. I think it's just having those opportunities. You know, I came in. Yeah, and absolutely, that's a testament, you know, to hard work and hustle. Like, uh, it's good to to say to the young guys nowadays coming up, like, uh, effort oftentimes can overcome talent. You know, you know, uh, just sticking with it, not giving up on the play, and you know, fighting tooth and nail for everything. Yes, yeah, absolutely right. Um. Despite your great play on the field and seemingly perfect fit in Dallas, the Cowboys could not afford to bring you back the next season due to salary cap issues. So in 1997, you were signed as a free agent by the Miami Dolphins. Uh, as a Dolphin in 1997, you would start six games at safety, record 43 tackles, two forced fumbles. Um, and uh, how was your time in Miami only being there one year? How did that compare? How did that compare? Yeah, that was tough again. You know, it's still it's all I'm basically there were four places in one year. You yeah. Know, look at the timeline of all this happened. Uh, love the city, of Miami. Uh, we moved down. Thought it was going to be a long term kind of move. Uh, but actually, that was a, a tough time. You know, working with uh, Jimmy Johnson, and uh, you know, I know they signed after they signed me. They signed another free safety. Um, wow. And so I knew I didn't have to compete uh, for it. So I ended up not winning the position. Um, so we uh, mutually agreed, you know, after the year that, that it would be best for me to try the free agent market again. Yeah, you were, speaking of that, you were always having to f fight for that starting position. Uh, in 98, the Dallas Cowboys would bring you back as a nickel corner. And uh, you would replace Omar Stoutmeyer as the starting free safety in the 10th game of the season. Uh, you only started five games in 98, but recorded 52 tackles and two sacks. Um, what was it like? Were you happy to be back in Dallas? Um, the answer is yes. Uh, but you're alluded to the other part of you know, have to continue the fight. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, 
Yeah, you would have thought that uh, you would earn that starting spot, especially with your pe play in the playoffs and all that. But they kept making you fight for it, and a testament to your, you know, your fight, you kept earning it back. Um, in 1999, you would start 14 games at free safety, record 102 tackles, two picks returned for touchdowns. Um, in 2000. You were part of one of the most memorable plays that I can remember. I remember watching this game as a kid. Um, September 24, 49ers at Cowboys. Terrell Owens, as a member of the 49ers, not once but twice, ran to the Cowboys star at midfield and celebrated after scoring a touchdown. Now, I was thinking, I was surprised that more, like that, more Cowboys didn't come out ready to fight T.O. And you were the one guy that ran out there and we're like, you're not going to celebrate on our star. Can you tell me a little bit of what that was, what, what happened there? Yeah, um, you know, that was a, a tough game for us and Cowboys players uh, and a trip for the fans because they were putting on us pretty good. Um, and so there was a little bit of back and forth, you know, between T.O. and I. And, um, you know, they went out right to the star. And, you know, it was cool to have them go back out and have the requirements back on the ball now. And, Yeah, and uh, that moment was named uh, one of the te 10 most memorable uh, moments in Texas Stadium history. Um, T.O. said on, on national TV a couple times that uh, he, he said that it was like personal between you and him that you wanted to get back at him for a block that he put on in the end zone. I thought, um, w was that a personal thing between you and T.O. or was that a... Um, uh, uh, like you felt like the Cowboys, your team was being disrespected by that. You know, that's right. Uh, I don't, I, mean, I don't have anything personal against T.O. You know, I never have. Yeah. Even in the game, you play the game to, to win, you play the game for pride, you play the game for respect. Um, so when certain things are, are happening, um, you know, there's certain things you just can't do when you go into people's homes. Um, so, um, Whatever he has to say about that, or whatever he thinks, I know he kind of, you know, he has his own way of thinking when it comes to that. So <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. Um, he, he's he's a Hall of Famer. He has a lot of talent. He, you know, he's, he's one of the best receivers that ever come through the the game. But you know, he and I just didn't uh, get along or didn't agree. How mm -hmm. things supposed to go down that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then another day in September 23 of 2001, just two weeks after September 11, you came out on the field with the American flag above your head. That had to be a great feeling for you and to do that and show support for the country on that stage. Nice. To have a Twitter page, yeah, you know, it's just something that I take uh, big pride in. 
Yeah, absolutely. A great moment for you and for, uh, you know, just to show that support. Um, so hell of a career. You finished, you know, your great nine-year NFL career uh, playing 133 games played, 453 tackles, 15 interceptions, six forced fumbles, and two defensive touchdowns. Um, thinking about where you were at in high school, uh, and then thinking about your great nine-year career, uh, pretty impressive. And uh, what's it like to look back on all that? Well, thank you. Um, but it was not. Uh, I would never, would have never dreamed that when I was in elementary, or even in high school, or even in college, um, because you know that's a, a difficult task to try to play nine years. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, great stuff. Um, what are you up to these do these days, George? Uh, are you still uh, head coaching at John Paul High School in Plano, Texas? Yeah, I am. I'm also the athletic director there. Nice. I've been, uh, been here at John Paul High School for two years. Uh, just come off two pretty good seasons, and uh, you know we're looking to to build the program to. Uh, Yeah, uh, best of luck with that. I, you know, hope you keep building something great there, and I have no doubt you're going to have lots of success uh, at that level as head coach. Um, so best of luck to you there, and uh, thanks so much for some of your time, George. Uh, great interview. Um, you're the man. Hey, man. Uh, I appreciate it. Having people uh, give me a follow on Twitter, so I'm uh, at Team Football. Yeah. Uh, at Team Football, and that would be, uh, I'd appreciate it. All right, sounds good. Uh, thanks again, and uh, have a good one, George. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Yep, later. All right, that'll do it for this week's interview. Uh, I'm your host, Alex Leak. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave a comment. We'll keep the interviews coming. I hope you enjoyed this one, one of my favorite interviews. And uh, thanks for all the support, guys. Really appreciate it. Have a good one, guys. Peace out.